I'm going to talk to you about problems. I've been fortunate to see education from a few different angles these past few years. Inside the classroom as a French and German teacher, just outside the classroom door as a government advisor, and in the last few years working in the weird and murky world of venture capitalism and television companies and digital media. And it's through the lens of the last little part of professional experience that I began to spot a problem. I spotted something that was going to halt the very ability of our young people to contribute to a creative, sustainable, and fascinating world for them. And for the last 18 months, I've been working with schools all around the world on what we think is a solution uh, to solve that problem. When I was working um, in the television corporation and also uh, working for film investment companies, I think in the last four years, I've seen about 3,000 ideas or pitches. And of those, only 30 have seen the light of day. That means that the United Kingdom's most creative and successful people have a success rate of 1%. And then, when I go and look at education systems as they stand today, I begin to see the reason why. You see, education systems, teachers, school districts all over the world are going crazy about problem-based learning. Nothing like a good problem to solve, but they're looking at the wrong bit of it. The thing we're neglecting is to find a generation of problem finders. I don't want young people that can solve a pseudo problem, a fake problem generated by their teacher. I want young people that can go out into the world and find problems that really need solving and have the capacity to go and start solving them with their peers. Now I met this chap, Simon Breakspear, earlier this spring for the first time in Cambridge. And he told me over coffee this fascinating challenge he was up against. He said the biggest educational problem he had was finding a problem that hadn't been solved yet. Simon is undertaking that traditional bastion of educational quality, the PhD. Do you know how many people in the country take a PhD? One percent. So what I began to realize, and when I began to see it, I saw it everywhere this summer over some uh, nice Maine lobster. This man, Alan November, a good friend and educator, told me about something else. He was running a community problem-solving class, and he started the class by telling the students, I, you can go out into the community, find any problem that needs solving, and I will do my best to facilitate any technology you need to make that problem solved. And before he had even finished the premise of the class, the hands are up at the front. Sir, sir, you're the teacher. We're the students. It's your job to give us the problem, and then we'll go off and solve it. You see, generations of students, parents, teachers, have been brought up to believe that pseudo-problems like this are the kind of thing that we need to generate problem solvers. Problems that, quite frankly, nobody could give a damn about. Problems that don't exist in my world. The human body was never meant to ski. <laughs> Problems that certainly don't exist in the eyes of the kids in Drum Chapel or Musselboro that I used to teach. And so we get this notion as well that to make that problem approachable and accessible to the 30 kids in front of us, we have to differentiate. And so we see differentiation of pink worksheets for the clever kids, yellow worksheets for the less clever kids, as if that's the way that somehow we're going to create a wonderful generation of people who can solve problems. We end up with ingenious answers from young people to stupid problems that don't matter. <laughs> you see, for too long, teachers have been doing the most important part of learning for the kids. I'm a believer that divergent thinking is where the future lies. I think that you need to have a bit of convergent thinking come in towards the end of the process to make great ideas actually survive out in the wilds of the real world. Now in learning, if I was to take this design thinking kind of structure from the D school, from IDEO, then what do we see? When I look up here, the teacher is doing the immersion into all those potential areas that we could study. And they're honing it down on a Sunday night into those problems that their kids are going to be able to solve. At this point, at the gray line, the kid gets hold of the problem. They're allowed to come up with an idea to solve it and then prototype. Maybe they could write an essay. Or maybe, if they're lucky, they'll make films and podcasts and blogs. 
And then that final point, the teacher is going to provide the feedback to them in far too many classrooms. Or worse still, the examination. What I'm working with teachers all over the world to do is remove them as much as possible from the learning because children should be doing the hard work of learning, not the teacher. I want to see more divergent thinking in our curriculum, and to do that, students have to learn to do the work of their teachers. So how about something different? Well, earlier this year, I was delighted when I showed a couple of TED Talks to children in Sunderland in the northeast of the UK, and they immediately said, we're doing that. And so they launched their own TEDx event, seven-year-olds and eight-year-olds. They wrote the talks. And of course, the big question was, what shall we talk about? And they waited for the teacher to spoon feed them. We didn't allow the teachers near them. So instead, our youngsters came up with wonderful problems or intrigue that needed solved and investigated. Do animals talk? Do babies have a secret language? Which cancer should be cured first? And why do people need to get sick? And hopefully you saw her fake vomit on screen. It's rare that I see children cheer each other on for their learning like this. But when we have taken our principle of problem finding curricula into schools, wherever they are in the world, the reaction is the same. The world needs a generation of problem finders. It's pure and simple. It's the only way we're going to overcome the challenges we face and our future generations are going to face. And to do that, I'm hoping you can help me with my pledge. Starting this week and before we get to Christmas, I want to engage 10,000 learners in a problem finding curriculum, and I'm going to need your help to do it. So I'm asking all teachers, all parents, all school district leaders and politicians to help me in that starting this week. I uh, started off with the tale about Alan and his class of, sir, you give us the problems and we'll solve them. Well, they made problems, they found problems all year long, right through into the summer vacation. And when they got the new computer to solve these problems, Unfortunately, a child broke into the school in the summer holidays. He didn't break into school, though, to steal the computer. He broke into school to reprogram the computer so it could solve the problem he had found. And that, I guess, is what a problem-finding curriculum does to people. Thank you. Thanks.